Hello, this is a, a regular tuning, uh, Stymie Model B, and uh, as you can see, we have the tuning card from each tuning that was done. Last one was done in uh, April last year, and uh, this is now January, so it's uh, it's more than six months, which you'd normally uh, have. You can see the different pitches of the piano. If A440.1 was the last pitch, let's have a look at the pitch on on, an a, on the A now. A little higher there and higher there too so that's not a bad thing it hasn't gone normally pianos go flat so it might have absorbed a little bit of moisture and we'll set the pitch I think A443.23 that kind of pitch so check the other A here similarly sharp flat the always goes slightly flat in the bass tree and then the treble will be slightly sharper so let's set that as the A. I'm going to start tuning at C here. Let's see here. This is my way of tuning. Now when you're doing these regular tunings, you want to be careful not to, uh, the idea is not to try and turn too many tuning pins. Obviously that tends to destabilize it. So you want to find the right pitch to start with. So spend some time at the beginning just deciding what pitch to put the whole piano at. So far the piano has been really in tune. There's just a few of the few, in fact this is almost the first unison. The important thing here is setting the pin so it won't go out again. So a downward movement with the tuning lever, I'm hitting it really hard, reasonably hard. If you could regularly hit, too, hit the piano too hard on, uh, you could damage your ears, so you'd be a bit careful with that. And that was just the middle one that was out there. Now we've only found about three unisons out of tune in the middle, middle area. Those are all being tuned, and really that means the piano's probably not been played very much, or it's incredibly stable, one or the other. And now we're going up from the uh, C, this is the temperament area, up to the top of the piano and checking fifths and octaves. Fifth pure, octave slightly sharp. The general rule, um, by the way, if you go by your ear, not, not rules, because um, rules are there, so your ear is what counts really. But the general rule is, now we're doing the unison here. So when you're checking the fifth and the octave, fifth, nice and pure. Octave slightly sharp. Here, the, the fifth is nice and pure, the octave's a bit too sharp. That's better. As we get near the top, uh, this gets in the way a bit of me visually, so I'm just leaning over. And on this very top bit, about the top six or seven notes, I prefer. I uh, prefer to tune that at the end, so then you can hear it in context of the whole piano. So now we're going to do the bass area. Now when it comes to doing the bass, check the, the fourth, fifth and fourth, and octaves. We're not using the machine here, by the way, it's just to a few visually to get some idea of which notes are being tuned. There's F4, F3, C. The main thing is to go by your ear. This is obviously not amazingly accurate, although the we tested the tuning fork earlier on it and it was exactly 440, but I think generally you've got to, you've got to use your ear. This is just a guide and really a visual aid for you to see on the video. And then do the unisons. So as I say, we're tuning the fourth and fifth. Really, there's only been perhaps uh, 30, 35, 40 tuning pins I've had to touch in the whole piano so far. But the general idea is obviously regular tuning. You want to set the pins so well that they just won't need tuning very often. But I, I suspect the client hasn't used the piano an awful lot uh, since last April. So you see, most of it's just checking. The unisons are in. You have to make decisions, really. You want to keep the piano stable. You don't want to change the tuning pins, even if you might think, well, slightly. You're, talking, you're not talking about concert tuning here. 
which the concert's going to be given on, then obviously that's where you've got to be really, hopefully the piano's sort of dead perfect. The main, the main criteria here is to keep the piano in tune for the next six months, and uh, so it doesn't go out of tune. Oh, so you want to, so you want to wait on that rather than waiting on accuracy. But in fact, we have got accuracy here as well. The Steinway B does does hold its tuning really well. If the tuning pins are tight, which they are, then we shouldn't have any problem. Notes. The bass notes. We do two at once here. So we put the wedge in, wedging this one and the next one. Just saves time, really. Every tune has got their own way of doing things, so yours might be better than mine. Just showing you the way I do it. Um, and again, if really, I don't want to alter these tuning pins unless I have to. Remarkably, the client has just told me that he has played about an hour a day, every day, since, since the last tuning, which is amazing. Testament to the piano being really, really stable. Loud, so really that is remarkable. Now we're going to go through testing all the notes. I like to test fifths and octaves. Top ones, that definitely needs tuning. That one, if I pitch phrase this, I would, <coughs> I would do more of a check really <coughs> because I know that this is that correct. That's not so bad. So we've got to just do some fine tuning on those. So that's tuning a modern Steinway B and uh, very encouraged to see how stable it's been. Because when you're tuning you can also listen to the toning The client hasn't mentioned anything and, and really I like it a lot, I think it's fine. We did tone this piano when we sold it, so I toned it in the house when it arrived as well. All our pianos have a 10 year guarantee and, and follow up tunings. So thank you very much for listening.